In this case, we have selected a Fred Jr. 3021, which signifies a 3.0 mm stent diameter with a working length of 21 mm, for use in a target vessel of 3.0 mm in diameter. This is known as right sizing. On Fred Jr., you can first see the distal end of the microcatheter, followed by the distal stent end radiopaque markers. You can then see the compressed radiopaque helical strands of the stent, followed by the proximal marker on the microcatheter. You will note that there is no delivery wire extended beyond the distal tip of the stent. When anchoring the stent distally, make sure that you give yourself enough room to position the device across the neck of the aneurysm by pulling back the microcatheter. Smoothly and evenly deploy the Fred Jr. stent just as you would with Fred. You will notice that with Fred Jr. there is no distal tip of the pusher wire extended beyond the distal end of the stent. Gently pull back on the microcatheter to be centered within the vessel. Using the 50-50 rule, we can see that the proximal landing zone is too close to the aneurysm neck. We will therefore need to resheath and reposition the stent. Resheathing technique is identical for Fred Jr. and Fred. Smoothly deploy the stent over the aneurysm neck until you are satisfied with the final position. Then continue to deploy until the stent is released from the pusher wire. Make sure that the proximal end of the device completely exits the microcatheter before attempting to traverse the lumen of the stent. Maintain the microcatheter position intraluminally if you wish to re-enter the stent. Gently advance the tip of the microcatheter's distal end into the stent and remove the delivery wire. This is now to be exchanged with a Traxxas guide wire. A J-shape will ensure that the guide wire is within the lumen of the stent when navigating through it. Advance the Traxxas guide wire up through the headway microcatheter. This will be the guide wire that you use to navigate your way back through the stent.